Hello, welcome to this presentation. Today we are going to learn how to read a micrometer screw gauge and the question we have reads the diagram below shows a portion of a micrometer screw gauge used to measure the diameter of a metal pipe. The reading on the gauge when the jaws were fully closed without the pipe was 0.012 centimeters. So this is the diagram. Then part A, what is the diameter of the pipe? And then finally part B, given that the length of the pipe is 1.40 centimeters, find its volume. Okay, let's do part A. What is the diameter of the pipe? In other words, we are asked to read the scale provided here. Now for a micrometer screw gauge, we have these two parts that contain the scale. This part here is called the sleeve and this part here is called the thimble. So the scale on the thimble is referred to as thimble scale and the scale on the sleeve is referred to as the sleeve scale. So we are going to take the readings on the scales and we are going to begin with sleeve scale. And for the sleeve scale, on the upper part, these are the millimeter marks. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 millimeters. And we need to take note that there are half millimeter marks, these shorter marks in between the millimeter marks. So those are the half millimeter marks. And in case we are able to see half millimeter mark on the sleeve scale, then any measurement that we take should be 0 0.50. So on the sleeve scale here, we have five and then because of the half millimeter marks, we'll have to add 0 0.50. So we have 5.50 and this is in millimeters. Mm -hmm. Let's now look at the thimble scale. The reading on the thimble scale that we'll consider will be the mark on the thimble scale that coincides with the center line of the sleeve scale. Now this is the center line. As you continue with it, this line that coincides with it, this right here, will be where we'll be taking our reading. So if this is 10, it increases upwards, 10, 11, 12. So that is the 12th mark. Now for the thimble scale, That reading that you have gotten right up there, we have to multiply it by 0 0.01. And that means whatever we'll have as the reading is 0 0.12 millimeters. We have multiplied 12 by 0 0.01. And then the reading we get here is 5.62 millimeters. We're told that the reading on the gauge when the jaws were fully closed without the pipe was 0 0.012 centimeters. Now we need to take note that that is the zero error. If you have the jaws closed without an object between the jaws, the reading that you take there should be the zero error. And for this case, the zero error is positive. So we will have to correct the zero error by subtracting that reading from what we've gotten here from 5.62. So we have the zero error, we are told 0 0.012 centimeters. Now, remember our readings are in millimeters, so we have to convert this in millimeters so that we're able to use it in the problem. So, 10 millimeters should be equivalent to 1 centimeter, so 0 0.012 centimeters should be equal to 0 0.12 millimeters. So at this point we are going to correct the zero error by having the diameter given us 5.62 
minus the zero error because the zero error is a positive zero error we subtract so minus 0 0.12 and that should give us 5.50 millimeters that is for part a let's move to part b given that the length of the pipe is 1.40 centimeters find its volume now we know that a pipe is cylindrical in nature and the length we're therefore given as 1.4 centimeters 1.4 centimeters we need to convert this in millimeters so that we'll be able to match the units as the ones we had earlier on so 1.4 centimeters should be equivalent to 14 millimeters once again 10 millimeters should be equivalent to 1 centimeter at this particular point we say volume is therefore given by pi r squared times the length and that means we'll have 22 over 7 times the radius radius we take the diameter we already got here 5.50 divided by 2 so the diameter 5.5 over 2 and then we square and then we'll multiply by this length 14 that when we work out from my calculator i'm able to get 332.75 cubic millimeters and so that marks the end of the solution to this problem thank you for watching hope to see you in the next video